I'm Brian Williams, and I'm here to do the very uh, this week's lesson for our teen church. This week's lesson is all things are put right, where our big uh, big idea is God's restored people shall prosper. Isaiah 49, 18 through 23. As you know, this last week's lesson, we were also in Isaiah 49, and it'd be a good, a good time for you to go back and read the entire chapter so you can refresh yourself on where we are on today. As we get into our, our theme for, this, uh, for our lesson for today, we encounter a man named Trey. Trey, just like myself, is in his 30s, and he's very successful, and he's worked, and he's uh, attained, he's set goals, he's achieved his goals, he's made money, he's saved his money, and now he's on the side to where he's ready to give back what, what's most important to him. He, what he does is he has his family, and he has his grandfather and his grandmother, and he wants to take care of them because he's seen them experience hard times in life. Trey's grandfather worked at a, a, at a factory, and he worked there as a teen all the way until now, where he's now retired and living in the life where uh, he's now currently at. Trey sees this, and he wants to make a difference. So what does Trey do? Trey says in his mind that he wants to make sure that his grandma and his grandpa Roy have a home to stay in. Well, as he gets ready to initiate this plan, things change. And so does life for Trey's grandpa, Roy. Grandpa Roy is diagnosed with a terminal disease that now has left him with not so many days left. And now he and Trey are having this conversation and Trey is devastated. Matter of fact, he's, he's so devastated that Grandpa Roy encourages him in the moment when he should, probably should be encouraged himself. And what uh, Grandpa Roy tells him is what someone who's walked with God for a very long time tells us or would have a testimony about. That God is faithful and yet he's grateful. But what is Grandpa Roy grateful about? That another generation has come on the scene and ready to carry the torch, it, to carry out the plan. How do we go into our lesson on today? Our lesson right now, as I mentioned to you, is in Isaiah 49. We're in the latter part of it, in verses 18 through 23. And as we saw last week, the people, God's people, were rebellious. I mean, just downright bad. The God has now put them in captivity with Babylonians, and they're getting ready to come out. He has pronounced to them that a king named Cyrus would come to their rescue and bail them out and send them back home. And we'll see that be fulfilled in the next few chapters. But as of now, he's speaking to a, a restoration to them that just has not been fulfilled just yet. When this moment of uh, um, the promise being revealed to them, not yet to be fulfilled to them, for them, they're now here ready to receive the Redeemer, which we see last week, which would be Jesus Christ. Well, as they're sitting here, uh, as we look into our lesson, we look first at this progeny blessing. It is where God has made a covenant all the way back to Abraham in Genesis, in the book of Genesis 11 and 12, where there would be a special people to carry out the covenant, which he had made to his people so long ago. Here's a tidbit for you as we apply it to today. Over 60 plus years ago, God made a promise to some people who founded this church that if they just walked with him and they followed his ways, that he would do more than they could ever expect. And as I make this recording on today, we sit in the church, we sit in the building that only God gave us with a pastor who preaches to us every single Sunday and a people who gather to hear that word, to hear the same word about Jesus Christ every single Sunday. And they didn't realize our four people, our forefathers from Lily Grove wouldn't have ever thought that we would be in a place as we are today. And yet you're here watching this video as a covenant carrier to carry on the good news of Jesus Christ to the world and the name of Lily Grove so that we can continue to carry out the word of God. So as we look into our lesson, we move into our first point, the promise of restoration, verses 18 through 20. Isaiah 49, verses 18 through 20. Lift up your eyes and look around. All your children gather and come to you. As surely as I live, declares the Lord, you will wear them all as ornament. You will put them on like a bride. Though you were ruined and made desolate and your land laid waste, now you will be too small for your people and those who devoured you 
will be far away. The children born during your bereavement will yet say in your hearing, this place is too small for us. Give us more space to live in. As we look into the promise of restoration, we see that uh, it pretty much is summed up this way. God's, uh, it speaks of God's hand on their lives or on our lives and his mind for them or his plan for us as well. What does it speak of? It speaks of restoration and how things, it's God's commitment to them. Not only it speaks of God's commitment to them, but it, it speaks of things being better than they were before. He gives a picture of a bride. You've all been to a wedding and you've seen the groom come in, you've seen uh, the groom's men and you've seen the bridesmaid and the, uh, the maid of honor. But when the bride comes in, looking beautiful and, and gracious and, and the, the spotlight is on her, all she's decorated in such a way that it leaves everyone in awe. And that's what God, he's speaking of in this text. It says that the added people would be a blessing and the strength as an ornament to God's people. And God wanted to assure them of his commitment to what he was saying. It is like when we look at uh, the way this picture of how God's people were and that how they were uh, wasted and desolate and unproductive, God manifested a savior, which would be Jesus Christ, that would come and introduce transformation to the world. So do we see restoration? But we also see being redeemed and renewed through his covenant with, with God. Number two, let's look at questioning restoration in verse 21. Isaiah 49, 21. Then you will say in your heart, who bore me these? I was bereaved and barren. I was exiled and rejected. Who brought these up? I was left alone. But these, where have they come from? When we look in verses 21, we see that this mother, it's a picture of a mother who is now looking around her and she sees that there's no one there, down and out, very downtrodden. And all of a sudden, these children are now around her. And now she's, so, uh, she's in a place to where she feels so uh, excited. So exuberant to see that God, what God has done. And that was the picture of him. He's basically saying that when things are desolate, she couldn't believe what she was seeing. And because she couldn't believe what she was seeing, it was only God that could do it. Here's something for you. Has there ever been a time where you were uh, down and out? Has there ever been a time where you felt like God had forgotten about you? Never fear. God's always been there. It's just sometimes his timing and our timing don't align. But when they do, that's something that we ought to share with others to, to tell them that it may not be easy, but it's all worth it walking with God in the end. Our last point is confirming restoration and prosperity, verses 22 and 23. Isaiah 49, 22 through 23. This is what the sovereign Lord says. See, I will beckon to the nations. I will lift up my banner to the peoples. They will bring your sons in their arms and carry your daughters on their hips. Kings will be your foster fathers and their queens, your nursing mothers. They will bow down before you with their faces to the ground. They will lick the dust at your feet. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Those who hope in me will not be disappointed. This is where God is. It's like an army call. It's like a general calling his troops uh, into an army uh, to himself. And that's what's going on in here. God is calling his people to himself and he sets the standard for them because the ones that he has called to himself will be given great care, devotion, loving kindness, just as a nurse would with babies. But he also says something that you need to see here. Non-believers will give to the increase protection and the maintenance of these children, meaning provision. So. As I move forward in my lesson on today and I close the lesson, here's what we learned today. We learn about restoration and God's restoration is always best. We also learn that there are moments where we need to repent and redeem such as these children did, children of Israel, for what they've done because and which led to Jesus Christ through being redeemed. But we realize in being redeemed, we get renewed in our relationship with God. 